Alrighty, I'm looking forward to getting in some time with this little guy. Uh, so today is, what is today? Tuesday the 22nd, I think it's the 22nd, right? <laughs> I've, had, I've had two days off work and already I can't remember what the dates are. Um, and I'm going to record these two sessions. I'm going to do two one-hour sessions um, so that you can have a play with your little Lima over the holiday break if you've got time to if if that strikes your fancy, as they say. All right, so <clears throat> this is where we got up to. You're going to have to ignore the little barking dog from next door. But, um, this is where we got up to in our last live session that was less than cooperative. Um, and I'm ready to dive in. I'm just trying to decide which way I'm going to go. I need to do a bit more work around the eye there yet. Um, I'm actually going to bring the table up a little bit. My fancy table. Just make sure that that is focused. Okay. Let's do some darkness around the outside of the eye, a little bit more of that. Um, I'm just trying to decide which way is going to be the best way to go. Alright, I'm going to add a little bit of pink first. A bit of this beige. I know I'll call it pink and it's not called pink. <laughs> it's just very pink. <laughs> beige red. Um, there's a little bit more of that in this ear here. And I'd started to put some in there. Let's do a really light little wash over the top there. Um, maybe I should build up some of these oranges first, actually. Okay, I've got some terracotta here. If I build up the oranges, then I'm going to... Oh, look at that. Then I'm going to get a better idea of how dark and how reddish I want to go with the dark parts around the outside of the eye structure there. I'm just using very light strokes. I have to build the layers slowly without any stress on my wrist, without digging into the paper structure. Until it's necessary anyway. You hear the magpies outside. There's a couple of young ones and they're just learning how to make all the magpie noises. So they kind of sound like they're tuning in a radio. I want to put a little bit of undercolour through here too so I've got warm grey. No, I'm not going to use warm grey one. I'm going to use ivory. And use ivory. There's some really light yellowish tints up the top here. Just getting a little base layer down, working in sort of circles. There's some nice burnt sienna through here too, which I'm not sure is on our list, but oops. One that I'm going to add to it. Okay, that's very light. You can hardly see it. Let me bring you down a little bit. There we go. Oh, and I'm going to get some more of this terracotta down. So I'm just doing some sort of long-ish fur strokes and building them up on top of each other. I'm hoping we won't have too much traffic go past. I am I'm waiting on a parcel so I need to leave the front door open because I don't want them taking it to the 
post office where I'd have to spend an hour lining up to get out. Now I could just colour it in, this area, like just colour that Olin and terracotta, but by doing fur strokes you're allowing little bits of the all the ivory that we've got down at the moment through. Um, <clears throat> you're starting to build texture so as we add more oranges uh, it will show that there's like multiple colours there, not that it's just one flat colour. And you'll see that my strokes are all coming up and out. I want the tapered edge to be um, coming out at the top of each first stroke. And I know that there's a little bit of a, a grey line there, um, which is sticking out against this orange, but if you look at the reference, there's actually quite a bit of really dark colouring up the top there, so that will be used to address that area, so you won't notice the grey. Okay, so that's terracotta down. Now I'm going to get some burnt ochre, if I can find it. Here it is. Let's try and decide if I want to sharpen that point up a bit, and I think I will. Just a little bit. I want to start to bring some of it in, so it's a little bit darker. Um, it's got that sort of ochre colour to it. So I want to lay that down primarily where I'm also going to lay some burnt sienna down, so I want to get some nice depth happening in there. And I'm looking at the way that the hair is situated, how it comes up and out, where there's little clumps of it and of darker and lighter colours. So I'm not just going to go willy-nilly everywhere. Or I'll add um, sort of thicker areas of it in some spots. Quite a bit golden at the top here, so I'll add a little bit of yellow in there as well. We've got this area where it meets in with this really dark area, so let's bring a few of those across. As we start to darken up that area, it's going to be a nice interlude. Okay, let's grab some burnt sienna. <clears throat> I want to bring some of that in around this darkness around the eye. It's quite a reddy colour. But I'm also going to use it sort of as a light toning area, not specific. Not specific um, fur strokes, but there's some areas where there's some real ready darkness. Um, so we'll use it, use it as a as a toning tool, as a glaze.
And then there's some areas that you do want to bring in some hairy shakes too. You see that the more that you spend time looking at a particular area, the more colours that you'll start to see in it that you want to bring out. Okay, let's go for a bit of a golden colour now. Um, so I have this light yellow ochre. We'll try that first, but I think that it's probably going to need to be something a little bit lighter, but <clears throat> let's try. That's not too bad, actually. We think. Let's do a little bit of green gold. Hmm, okay. Um, what do I do with that burnt sienna again? There's just a couple of aspects here where I want to bring... I'm just going to take the edge off that so it's a bit sharper. down into it. it was looking too much like a straight line there oh, that wasn't a very good sound that was a dove going into one of my windows. <laughs> I guess the sparrowhawks out there. And it sounded a bit dramatic but they're generally okay. I think in all the time that I've been here there's only been one instance where it hasn't been alright. That was a pretty hard crack. Burnt ochre. Getting some nice depth happening now. Um, I'm going to bring out the walnut brown and again do a little bit darker it's around the edge of this eye here. And then I also want to bring in some sepia as well. We can actually start to bring some of those. So this needs sharpening as well. It's fairly sharp, but it's not um it's not gonna give me the crisp lines that I want. Just rolling it over my sandpaper and then after another one or two of those then it'll be into the smaller sharpener.
There's a few little spots in here that there's some dark flecks of hair too. It's working lightly. Oh, there's our parcel. Okay, parcel put away, all good. Um, now, <clears throat> I have turned on my fan because it is a little warm in here. It's actually really muggy. We've had quite a bit of rain and <clears throat> as a consequence, um, now that it's heating up again, it's getting very warm. So I'm back to my walnut brown. And I'm looking at some of these little dark patches that peek through up in these light areas up here. Just the tips of some of the hairs even. Um, and there's quite a bit of darkness in amongst here. That's where I think where I started, I think, before the poster came. We'll get in here and it's just going to be this process of building this up it, it's close but the color's not quite right yet um, and there's not enough layers I can still see quite a lot of the um, ivory which you know we want some poking through but not quite as much as what's going on there all right <clears throat> I'm going to get terracotta out again and build a little bit more of that up. The hair is actually quite wiry, um, it's a little bit curly in spots too. I always like to think about how it would feel, both to touch it and how it might feel for the wee creature too. It's got um, burnt sienna. This dark area sort of dips down a little bit more than what I had it in there and up a bit. So it really is, it's all just about um, slow gentle progress about building layers which might take a little bit longer but it um, it prolongs your connection I think with the work you get to see uh, more than you would if you rush through it you get to really sort of dive into the structure the colors the way that the the colors of the tone and the value um, create shapes Plus, it's much easier on your wrist, um, or all the physical aspects of creating. <clears throat> I'm just very lightly adding in some of this tonal variance in there. Come back to the terracotta, which could do with a bit of a sharpen. We'll bring a bit more orange into the dark area there just so that we've got something to play with when we come to adding the dark in there.
Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with some burnt umber, which also could use a bit of a sharpen. Bring some of this brownie tone in. Quite a bit more orange up in this little spot here. Got terracotta again. I'm going to grab a yellow. I actually think I'm going to get orange yellow. It's quite a bright colour. Um, but the tone is quite bright through here. And we can tone it down a little bit with um, some more of our orangey flavours. Ah, oh, burnt sienna again. Uh, I'm just, I'm using whatever pencil is striking me to, to be, uh, that's needed in any particular area. <clears throat> as my eye sort of wanders around through making sure that the value is right for any particular area. And so a really good way to determine the value is to take a black and white photo or change it to black and white of your work as well as black and white of the reference and look at the two together. How's that looking? I'm getting there. I'm going to take some of the beige red, that kinky colour. <clears throat> kind of sound a bit nasally still. I'm still getting over this chest infection that I've had. It's a little doozy. Some ivory. Then let's go big guns. So let's get the dark sepia. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I think she's almost done this one. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to sharpen it, to be honest. Let's see, what can I do? God, I can't even get it out of the pencil holder. There we go. I don't know if it's going to go into my sharpener. Hmm. Will it work on a hand sharpener? This is a pretty crappy hand sharpener. Oh, there we go. It's eating up the wood, but that's okay. Another few strokes of life left in her yet. Okay, I'm going to add some really dark. Nearly said feathers. Fur straight. And the funny thing is, when I work on birds, I want to say fur all the time. It's quite 
some quite long hairs coming out. Some more ones here too, but we'll wait off for those. A little bit more walnut brown. Let's get a bit more of this darkness in at the top areas here because it's always the darknesses, the dark colours that really add life to your drawings. We'll start to add in some of those dark areas now. <clears throat> My lines are a guide. But I'm really looking at the reference to where the darkest sections are Let me get some of that golden sort of colour in top there, so I've got my burnt ochre. I'm going to come in over the top of the walnut there, and I'm putting more than what's there down because we'll work into it with the darker colour. Make sure that we really see that sort of golden orangey flex through there and while we've got the ochre in our, burnt ochre in our hands let's come over this area I know we haven't got any base colour down underneath the orange there funny is it? <laughs> okay already I haven't filled this darkness in but I can see the shift in tones uh, and value over here so I can see already that I want to add some more um, burnt sienna in
Benzian is one of my favourite colours actually. Um, it has such a delicious warmth to it. A bit more of the burnt ochre. Can you see how taking your time to build up the layers makes um, such a gentle way to create depth? Um, where it is? Here it is. My burnt oak. Uh, burnt. What's it called? Burnt umber. That's it. A few little dark flecks through here. It's really lightly. Papers curled a little bit in the humidity. Okay, that is really dark through here. Uh, what I'm actually thinking I might do is take a little bit of ivory. Am I? Yeah, I think I'm going to put a little bit of ivory down just inside all of the areas, just lightly. Just inside all of the areas where we might just want to pull a little tiny fleck or two out. Let's get some of this darkness down. It is really, really dark. It's it's like sepia and um, it's warm. It's um, I want to say sepia and uh, dark indigo. But let's put let's put a layer of burnt umber down. And I can do this as a layer because there's really no information inside here. I'm just doing it lightly. And we're going to build up. There's not a diversity of colour, I guess is what I'm saying, in, in this middle part here. So it's not necessary to do it on a hair by hair basis. It's just really dark, except for those outer edges, which we'll spend more time on, a bit of attention to. Not pressing hard. Okay, so there's one layer. I am now going to put some blue down, so some dark indigo. And that's going to be a lower layer. So we're not going to really see it too much, but it's going to help pull um, the pigment down into the tooth of the paper. Again, I'm not pressing hard. And I want to spend more time on the areas that are closer to the light colouring. So I'm just going down into that fairly gently.
Okay. Now we've got the blue down. It looks like she's got a sorry, he's got a um, little blue mo mohawk. <laughs> I'm going to come in over the top of that with walnut, and I'm going to come down into lighter sections a, a bit more with the walnut, just gently, lightly. I don't want a hard line. And you can see my pencil is not very sharp. over the blue and creating like a nice deep black very dark color we may well want to go over it with black itself too but I'm going to go over with some sepia dark sepia after this and we'll just see how we go Deal with thing. I hear the cicada is telling me that it's going to be warm, that it is warm. Like I know, I can feel it. Okay, how's that look? I'm just coming over to the side because the bright lights for the camera, making sure that I've got over all of the blue because I don't want any weird blue popping out. Beautiful. Okay, dark sepia. Oops. I've got a water glass and then I've got a container full of pencils and I only picked that up instead. Right, oh, actually before I do that I'm going to take some um, ivory and come in around here. Okay. Oops. I have my dark sepia. It's nice and sharp, so I don't need to press hard. I'm actually going to put a little bit more burnt orange, uh, burnt ochre in this transition area. I want to bring it down and into the ivory there. <coughs> Same up here. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to put some more of it up the top here too. It'll blend the colours together a little bit, but also give me just a little bit more orange to work with. Yeah. 
So you can see that I'm just bringing a little bit of the darkness down into this orange, which then means that the orange has gone up and into the dark area as well. It's kind of annoying that a little bit of paper sticking up. I might just stick that down. Look at that little face. Careful of is not little picket fences. I don't want all perfect rows of hairs. There's a few little wild strays that come up. Hey, how's that look? It looks softer than that. Okay, I'm going to now go over the top of this darker area with my sepia. And I may well bring a little bit of black in too because it's very, very brown. Which it just isn't on the reference anyway. It's a very... I mean, there's definitely a warm colouring under it, but the hair is you know, really, really dark. It's working really lightly. Bringing a few little shadowy areas in. I'm going to work on this ear a little bit more too. It's not quite right. Look at you, so cute. Okay, let's grab black. I'm going to lightly go over the very darkest parts. I'm using a bit of a circular motion. I'm not pressing hard. I can actually see it when looking from the side. I can see it almost burnishing. It's pushing the pigment that I've got down there around a little bit as well. How's that look? Good. Okay. <coughs> I just want to work a little bit more on this ear over here. What I'm actually thinking of doing, will I or won't I? Yeah, I think I will. I think I'm going to give it a go. 
Let's live dangerously. I've got my uh, embossing tool here and there's some quite light areas through here but there is a bit of darkness to it. I don't feel like I've gotten the darkness in enough so I'm going to use the embossing tool just quite lightly. Well, I mean, I'm going to emboss with it. Um, so I can certainly see that I have added marks down. I'm following the hairlines here. And you don't have to do this. You can draw these little hairlines in. But I'll show you what I'm hoping is going to work. And I'm going to get a cool grey, so yeah, I'm going to start with cool grey 3, I think this is, yes, cool grey 3, and if it's darker then I've got a red got down there which might be a bit lighter. But can you see that where the embossing is there's lightness, so I'm not losing all of the hairy structure. We had there but I'm able to put in a bit more tone it's subtle but um and it's a goer there we go that looks better it's better already it's still not quite right though still not quite there um, what I want I think is some brown ochre to lightly come out here and then I also want to darken up um, so I've actually got cold grey 6 here and darken up in here a little bit And there's a little bit of brown in there as well, so I've got some Vista. So now that I've gone over that, can you see the, the light sort of areas showing through a bit more? So I'm able to get, <coughs> excuse me, a bit of, um, a bit of depth in there without losing my hairy bits. Which sounds a bit funny, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I've got cold grey five here. I don't know if I've done enough bossing all the way up there. I think my ear structure's not quite right. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit higher. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Hey, that little ear is much better. Um, I'll just bring a couple more darker hairs out through here. Yep, I'm much happier with that. Okay, where do we go next? Where shall we go next? Okay, so I do tend to like to work from uh, left to right because I am right handed um, so I'm, I'm considering doing the rest of this cheek here but by the same token I really want to do this area here oh decisions okay I think we're going to do this we're going to do this area here alright now you know what? I've fallen in love with using embossing in that way so I there's a bit more depth needs to happen on this outside here so you saw how we built up the layers here I'm going to do much the same or a little bit more of it in here so I'm going to grab my little embossing tool and we've already got some colour down here but I, I feel like it can use some darkening up and if we do a little bit of embossing around it then we'll keep some of that light sort of structure in. 
And we don't have to do these everywhere. I'm just going to do it in a few little select places. Cat here. But I want to be considered in how I'm doing that. I don't want to do it here yet because I want to put some of the, the cold grey one down there before I do that. So I'm just focusing on this area at the moment. Alright, I've got warm grey two. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that in here. Around the edge. Well, that's, there's that sort of transition between this browny colour and the light colour that's around the eye. 